Hello and welcome. What we're going to take a look at today is how to locate Aki points. Now that's going to be quite important because the better you can locate your Aki points, then the better is going to be your treatment outcome. So by the end of this presentation, you'll have an understanding of the actual sun measurement system and how to locate Aki points and also have an understanding of the importance of palpation. So the better your palpation skills, the better it's going to be for the location. So you'll use a combination of measurements and then palpation once you actually get into the region. And that's going to allow you to better locate the points. So if we start by surface anatomy, now I'm just going by my own personal experience with regards to surface anatomy. I remember when I first started to do acupuncture, uh, I'm a physiotherapist and a podiatrist. Now, Within my clinical setting, I'm used to palpating, locating certain structures. And I'm sure most of you physical therapists, whether you're a sports therapist, physio, osteopath, chiropractor, all of you will be used to palpating because that's what you're pretty much trained to do. But however, your surface anatomy, I found my surface anatomy wasn't as good as what I thought it was. And same again, when I'm training other colleagues in acupuncture, I find their surface anatomy is not as good as what they thought it was. But however, once you start to do your acupuncture and you start to, or even acupressure, and you start to locate key points, then you do need to be aware of your surface anatomy and that takes practice. Uh, so you will find over time, surface anatomy will improve. So that's gonna be quite an important thing to bear in mind is practice your surface anatomy and that way it will enhance your ability to locate points. The meridians is going to be important, is understand where your meridian lies, where the run, the association of meridians to the musculoskeletal aspect. So if you wanted to say, for example, find your spleen, a point on your spleen meridian, if you know the course of the meridian, it's going to be easier to direct straight to that location in order to get the appropriate point. So therefore, it is important to have some knowledge or a good understanding of the course of the actual meridian. Now, also your ability to precisely locate the acupoint along that particular meridian is going to be quite important. There are a number of methods in which you can actually use. Two key methods that has actually been developed is what you call the sun measurement. The sun measurement is more like using your own atomical inch or even centimetre, depending on what uh, metrics you're actually utilising. Now, the key thing is with regards to that, you have got what you call your finger measurements and you've also got what you call your bone measurements. And those uh, differ slightly depending on what method you're actually utilising. So one of your finger measurements, you may well be using one aspect of your finger. Otherwise, you can use in your thumb or you could use two fingers or you may well utilise the all three to measure from one position to another. So once you've got, say for example, you measure from the patella downwards and you're looking for something like summit 36, what you're gonna do is come along to the apex of the patella or along the knee joint line and then measure three suns, which will utilize these three fingers coming down there and it will give you a measurement and giving you approximation as to how far down and then it's one thumb width across from the lateral border of the actual shin itself. So again, it gives you more of a, uh, not a precise location, but an estimated location before you start to palpate. Now, however, that's your finger measurements. You have got your bone measurements where you can start to measure and what you're gonna do is get an, an estimated measure in that respect. So as you can see, if I'm wanting to go for something like stomach 40, stomach 38 or urinary bladder, um, 57, they all sit on the same plane. So from your knee joint down to your uh, medial malleoli, or should I say your lateral malleoli, that is a total of 16 suns. It's too great to start using your thumb measurement and start measuring down one below the other, or even putting your finger measurements and measure down that way. It's gonna be much quicker to do it that way. So therefore, you know that you're going to be approximately halfway. 
So it's eight suns up or eight suns down from the, either the malleoli or from the knee joint line. And that's gonna put you into the approximate location. So that's gonna be more your bone measurement where you're gonna measure the length of the actual bone. So as you can see from the knee joint to the lateral malleoli, you are looking at 16 uh, suns in total. However, if you're looking from the great greater trochanter to the actual knee joint, you're looking at 19 suns in total for that. So it's gonna vary depending on which measurements you actually use. Now one of the main things to bear in mind is the population in which these measurements was actually designed to be used on was mainly the Chinese Asian population. So it doesn't actually span across the entire world because you're gonna find, depending on where you are, what ethnicity you are, it will determine as to your body uh, makeup, your body composition. And it's gonna vary from one country to another. Even in the Asian countries, if you're looking at Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, they are going to have a different body composition. Whether it's body weight, size, it's all going to vary within those. So you can't use your um, sun measurement and expect to be in an absolute uh, precise location. The sun measurement will guide you into an approximate location. Now, let's say, for example, we look at Caucasians and Afro-Caribbean. Now, you're going to see a significant difference there as well. One of the key things that you're actually going to find is Afro-Caribbean. Let's say, for example, you take somebody, two people, that's six foot tall. Okay, Caucasian, that's six foot tall. Afro-Caribbean, that's six foot tall. And you stand them next to each other and you used to look at them. What you're basically going to find is the Caucasian will generally have a longer body, shorter limbs, whereas the Afro-Caribbean will generally have longer limbs, shorter torso in comparison to a Caucasian. So therefore, then uh, if you take that into consideration, that's why you're gonna find Afro-Caribbeans are generally good at sprinting. We automatically have a mechanical advantage. Same again, if you're looking at the muscle structure, such as your tendons, ligaments, you will find in most cases an Afro-Caribbean will have a slimmer ankle and the bulk of the muscle generally will be further up towards the knee. So the calf muscle is much, it's much higher uh, in compared to a Caucasian. So that does change things quite a bit when it comes to locating points. They, they are key things that you have to look at. I mean, particularly once you're looking at running economy, for example, um, if you look at key people such as the Ethiopians, that is very much how their lower limbs are. And that's basically being presented as allowing somebody to be more efficient runners. So you look at the research and that's the body, the foot uh, lower limb type that they're presenting to say you're gonna be an efficient runner. Now, don't get me wrong, you will have quite a few Caucasians that will fall into that category. So it's not purely Afro-Caribbeans. If anybody falls into that category, then obviously they'll be an efficient runner. But however, the majority of Caucasians won't fall into that uh, category. And if you come from certain parts of the world like the Ethiopians, you're more likely to fall into that category. So that's something to bear in mind is depending on where the individual's from will vary with regards to limb length, limb structure, and also size and weight of that particular individual. Now that brings us on to our palpation. So once you've measured and use whatever metrics of measurement you decide you want to use to get you into the location, now comes your palpation skills. And palpation is important again this is a technique you need to apply. When I'm teaching many a physical therapist, whether it's a sports, massage, osteopath, chiropractor, physio, you will find automatically you are trained to palpate and palpate into the deep structures below to determine what the problem is. Here, when you're actually palpating for an acupuncture point, the approach is very, very different. You're not using deep palpation in order to locate the acupuncture point. The palpation needs to be much lighter. I mean, if you're palpating for a trigger point, for example, then that's different again. For a trigger point, you are actually gonna use approximately four kilos of pressure in order to determine whether it's an active trigger point or even a latent trigger point. 
So that's going to be quite important, the difference. So if you're palpating for a, an acupuncture point, different pressure, very, very light pressure is what you're actually going to use. So your technique, what you're mainly going to use here is more finger pressure. And it's very light touch. You're either going to use your index finger or your middle finger. And what you're mainly going to do is to just rest it very lightly and glide across the skin. So there's no real pressure. And what you're basically doing is as you're gliding, you're feeling for slight indentation that's actually going to take place within the skin. And any dell that you may well find, because that's where the acupuncture is going to lie. Same again, as you glide in your hand across the surface, what you're basically going to start to feel is it'll glide nice and smooth and it'll hit a point where it starts to grip. And then it'll slide again once it goes beyond that point. Just as it starts to grip is where that acupuncture point is. So you'll find it'll either dip down into a little dell um, or a depression into the area and it'll start to get some traction at the same time and then it'll glide beyond that. That is the actual acupuncture point. The temperature may feel different. So there are key things that um, will feel different about the actual acupuncture point in itself. So they're pretty much what you're actually feeling for. So besides the depression, sensitivity. Sensitivity is gonna be an important one. These are what you call reactive points. And some points is gonna be more reactive than others, but then it depends as to what the patient's actually presenting with. So let's say, for example, you have somebody who comes in and they've torn the calf muscle, or they've torn, um, say, for example, pull the muscle within the back. If you go down to points such as liver three, and that's the point that's located between uh, the first and second toe, proximal to the metatarsal phalangeal joint, that's your liver three. You palpate into there, you are gonna find the side in which they've pulled that muscle, that point will be very, very tender. And that's where it becomes reactive because that's gonna be one of the main points for treating muscle tears. Another example is, let's say for example, you've got somebody with hip pain. On the side in which they've got the hip pain or any restriction within the hip, palpate your gallbladder 41. So that's on the outside of the foot between the fourth and the fifth metatarsal shaft, more towards the proximal end of it. And that's where you're actually going to find your gallbladder 41. And that point again will be quite tender, particularly on the side in which the problem lies. So therefore, that's where you're gonna have your reactive point. That's gonna be one of your main points you're going to utilize to treat the hip. So again, other things you're feeling for is changing temperature, nodule, any sponginess, or any changes as the finger, uh, in the smoothness in which the finger will actually glide across, across the skin. But remember, when you're palpating, it's light pressure. Unless you come into a reactive point, then you might press a little bit deeper to see how sensitive that point is. Sensitive, if it's quite sensitive, then yes, it's a point you're definitely going to use. If it isn't, then you, in some cases, you may well not need to worry about it in that respect. So thank you for listening. If you've got any questions at all, then by all means you can email me at info at stevebaileyacupuncture.com.